So is the current uh, focus on data, is it more of an evolution rather than a revolution? Are there past companies that have been doing this in, in uh, a different way and now we're just seeing it manifest as sort of in an online environment? Yeah, um, yeah my, my view is that when you think about it, data-driven companies have been doing this since before the beginning of data warehousing. It's just that it hasn't been so big or it hasn't been so obvious or it hasn't been so in the press. Um, I mean, I remember back in the early days when I did data warehousing first, the questions that were being asked were basically data questions, questions about what, what, what are our sales? How are we going to make our sales better? How do we understand whether we've got enough product on the, on the uh, production line? That's sort of data driven in the simplest sense of the word. Of course, when people got data warehouses, and you think some, some of people like Walmart, for example, they begin to build huge amounts of data, and then gradually they become more and more data-driven, and they push the data down into the processes that they're using to uh, make their supply chain work, make their, make their shelves appear always full, whatever it happens to be, and therefore they become gradually more and more data-driven. I think we've just got this focus on it now because... Um, when you look at um, what's going on on the internet, there's just so much data. It's the volumes and it's the, the um, that sort of magic flavor that goes on when you talk about, hey, Google have all this data, mm -hmm. and what, what do we do with it? I think it's just an evolution, as you said, rather than a revolution. Sure. Now, as you're saying that so many businesses are now data-driven, they always were data-driven, but as we have more data available to us, is there an increased risk in putting too much trust mm -hmm. in that data? I think there's a huge risk because we don't really understand, in many cases, the provenance of the data anymore. Mm. In the old days, and I'm sorry to be always talking about the old days, <laughs> but um, in the old days, all of the data used to come from our own internal systems in an organization, or 90% of it, or some percentage, some high percentage. And, um, you know, now it's not so clear. We've got this a huge amount of data coming from the internet, from sources that we've no control over. Um, it then gets massaged by various people who may or may not understand it or who may or may interpret it differently in terms of what does it mean. And so what happens, I think, is that there's a huge risk growing of being unable to put your faith in, in the data. And I think we have to be very careful about that. One of the things that I keep thinking about is we need to analyze the data along an, an axis of reliability and an axis of can, can, can we move it up and down that axis in order to understand does it make sense to put our trust in it. Mm. An example that I sort of often use is, um, is Wikipedia versus Encyclopedia Britannica. Right? I mean, when, when the guys came around to sell you Encyclopedia Britannica many years ago, and they charged you a lot of money for that 24 books, right? Mm -hmm, sure. um, you trusted it because you knew that it had been authored and it had been edited and they had gone to experts. And although you might not have agreed with the experts, at least you knew that they were experts mm -hmm. in your field. Take Wikipedia and, you know, the stuff on it changes on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. but it's free. So we have that, that, you know, that dichotomy, that, that tension going on between free data, untrustworthy data versus pay for data, um, and potentially more trustworthy. Right, right. So how do you see data warehousing changing over the next two years or so? Um, I think that data warehousing is, is at an inflection point. Um, and I mean, my presentation tomorrow is going to talk about, you know, the heat death of the data warehouse. And, you know, the, the question I was being asked was, is data warehouse going to die? Mm. And I don't think so. I think that data warehouse is going to change in its flavor. In the original concept, data warehouse was a sort of a logical conglomeration of data rather than this place that everybody did reporting of, mm -hmm. which is what it became over the years. Um, and in order for it to go back to its roots, what I think it has to do, it has to shrink a bit. Mm. It has to become part of a core set of business information. Not all data needs to go through it, the stuff we don't keep, the stuff we don't need beyond next week. Maybe that doesn't need to be in there, but the core information that defines our business, that defines our processes, that basically makes the organization or the company what it is, that needs to be in the data warehouse. So the data warehouse will shrink. I think it will become more active. In other words, it will get more closely tied in with the day-to-day um, the -day minutiae of, of the business 
but the day-to-day -day minutia of the process that's core to the business, mm. not the stuff we do around the, around the periphery. So it'll change, I think, in shape and in focus, and hopefully, um, you know, being the uh, illegitimate grandfather of the, of the concept, hopefully it will continue on for a few years more, you know? Sure, sure. No, I, I can understand why. So what do you see as a relationship between data warehousing and data science? Is, are data warehouses where the end product of data science should be stored? I think it's like a, um, I think it's a bit like a pendulum. I think it's a bit like the particle uh, wave stuff in physics. Mm -hmm. um, and I characterize data science as about innovation, and I characterize uh, data warehouse as about integration. And I see them feeding one into the other. So where data science comes up with some very interesting, innovative stuff, then that needs to go into the warehouse. Okay. When it gets into the warehouse and is integrated and is made consistent and is made you know, the basis for future work, then that integrated set becomes the basis for more innovation, add more data to it, put more data around the edges of it, but play with it some more when the results come through, back into the warehouse. It doesn't mean every result goes into the warehouse. I think it's about harvesting. I think it's about harvesting the stuff that makes sense, harvesting the stuff that, you know, really, yeah, that's the stuff that will make the difference tomorrow because innovation by, by definition, you know, is 90% throwaway. Sure. Yeah? So <laughs> right. get the 10%. And here's where collaboration really comes in and makes a big, big impact because it's peer collaboration that teaches you what it is that, uh, which pieces of data actually are valuable, which results are going to make a difference to the company, and whether they can be trusted in the end. Okay. So the collaboration then says, yep, that's good innovation. Now let's move it into the process and part, the process part of the business, which is, you know, the warehouse is the, is the heart of. Right. Well, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate you're, it. You're very welcome.